Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss what is probability and some definitions related to probability. So what is probability? It is a measure, isn't it? Yes, it is a measure of uncertainty or something that is unknown to us or we are not certain about. So we are going to deal with probability or the uncertainties. So first we have the classical definition of probability or the mathematical definition of probability. So it is as follows. If a random experiment or a trial results in n outcomes and those n outcomes has some unique features that is they are exhaustive they are mutually exclusive and they are equally likely. So these n outcomes have these three qualities and out of which m small letter m are the favorable to the occurrence of an event E. Then the probability of occurrence of event E is given by probability of m divided by n as given in equation number 1. So Something to note in this case is that the outcomes, these outcomes must qualify these conditions or these qualifications. That it must be exhaustive, it must be mutually exclusive and it must be equally likely. We have discussed these terms of exhaustive, mutually exclusive and equally likely in our previous video on random experiments. So I am not going to repeat that again. So. We know probability of E is equal to M by N by the classical definition of probability. So if classical definition holds, we know there are N number of trials. So N is greater than 0. Why is N greater than 0 and not equal to 0? Because if we are conducting an experiment, at least there will be one trial. And for that experiment, there will be at least one outcome, isn't it? One or more outcome. So, n, the, num the number of outcomes, n is greater than 0. Now is the case of favorable events. For the favorable events, there can be no favorable event, one favorable event, or more than one favorable event, or anything so. So, m takes the value 0, 1, 2, etc. So, the number of favorable events, m, can take value greater than or equal to 0. And we know the favorable number of outcomes, the favorable outcomes will be less than or equal to the total number of outcomes. So, m is less than or equal to n. If these conditions holds, that is m is greater than or equal to 0, n is greater than 0 and m is less than or equal to n, then we can say that the probability of E is greater than or equal to 0. Isn't it? Yes. If this there is no favorable event, then there is a case of probability of E to be 0. And we also know that probability of E is less than or equal to 1. So, which implies that the probability value, this probability P, lies between 0 and 1, which includes 0 and 1. Yes, so P lies in a closed interval 0, 1. Now, we have discussed about the happening of an event E. So, the non-happening of event E is, is said to be the complement of event E. Isn't it? Yes. The complement of event E. Which the probability of the complement of E can be denoted by Q or can be denoted by 1 minus P. Since the total probability of the happening of the events will be 1 or total probability of all the events. So if E happens with a probability small letter P and the no, then, the non-happening of event E 
the probability of not happening of event E will be 1 minus P. Now, if probability of E, that is the probability of happening of event E is equal to 1, then it is called a certain event and if probability of E equal to 0, then it is called an impossible event. So, a certain event is also known as sure event and the other one is impossible event or a null event. So there are some limitations to this classical definition and that we have already said that for the classical definition of probability to hold, it must satisfy some conditions like mutually exclusive, exhaustive and equally likely. So if that is not there, we cannot compute the classical definition of probability or we cannot compute probability using that classical definition. So if the outcomes are not equally likely, or equally probable then if we compute the classical definition or if we compute the probability using classical definition then the our probability value may go wrong and our decision also may go wrong also if the exhaustive number of outcomes or the total number of outcomes is either unknown or is infinite then we cannot compute the classical definition or we cannot compute the probability using the classical definition. So these are two limitations of the classical definition of probability. So if we come across some limitations, then we always go for the some improvements, isn't it? Yes. So the first one, we didn't know anything about probability or the measure of uncertainty. Then there was a normal classical definition of probability and we have seen that there are some limitations for this classical definition of probability. So we are looking for an improvisation, improvisation for this definition and then there is an another definition of probability and that is the statistical definition of probability or the empirical definition of probability. So this is same as the other case, but there is some difference. So if an experiment is performed repeatedly under essentially homogeneous and identical conditions, then the limiting value of the ratio of the number of times the event occurs to the number of trials as the number of trials becomes indefinitely large is called the probability of happening of the event. That means, I'll say it in a simple words. So if we have an experiment, suppose it is an experiment of tossing a coin. That is the most simple random experiment that we have. That we have. Okay. So I have a coin. So I don't know whether the probability of head and the probability of tail, I don't know the probability of head or tail, but it is a coin for which one side is a head and the other side is a tail. So I'm going to toss that coin once. I may either get a head or a tail, isn't it? Yes, because one side is a head and the other side is a tail. So I'm going to repeat this experiment of throwing this trial, uh, sorry, Coin this or tossing this coin repeatedly a large number of times and I want to get or I want to know the probability of getting a head and if I am doing it a lot number of times we know that the probability of getting a head will be 1 by 2. How do we know that? Because it has only two sides. And we know already that probability of getting head is equal to 1 by 2. But it is like we are going to conduct this trial a large number of times that a, a lot lot number of times uh, the coin is tossed and each time what is the result is being noted and at the end we will calculate how many favorable cases or how many heads have occurred in the total number of uh, trials and we come to that limiting case or we come to that value of probability as probability is equal to 1 by 2. 
so here in statistical probability or statistical definition of probability we repeat an experiment a large number of times or large number of trials and then its probability is calculated so that is the difference between the classical definition in classical definition it was not like repeating it a large number of times but in statistical definition we are going to repeat the experiment a large number of time and we are going to take the limiting case so to say it in a simple words or simple terms this is the definition of the probability or the empirical definition of probability so if in capital n trials of an experiment an event e happens capital m times then the probability of event or the probability of happening of event e is limit n tends to infinity m by n so there is a limiting case these definition this definition of probability also has some limitations and we are going to discuss about that so the limitations of statistical definition of probability if an experiment is repeated a large number of times the experimental conditions may not remain identical and homogeneous we have told in the definition of the probability the statistical definition of probability that we have to repeat our experiment we have to repeat a random experiment a lot number of times in a identical and homogeneous condition that may not be possible always why because we don't have a laboratory setting for all the experiments we don't have we can't find the ideal the ideal homogeneous environment for that so as the number of trials increases the conditions may be may also vary so that is one of the limitation of the statistical definition of probability next thing is that the limit that we have discussed in equation number 2 in the previous slide may not attain a unique value even though n goes large because that is a limiting value and that is like it may vary it may vary depending on the depending on the trials we are doing or depending on the experiments we are doing it may vary so we may not be able to attain a unique value but still we can get an approximate value so these are the two limitations of statistical definition of probability and in the next video we shall discuss about the axiomatic definition and the perfect definition of probability thank you